Wendy's, where quality is our recipe. Loney. Not only did the Baconator fries I make trumps yours, but you also suck at advertising. Eat spicy goodness like a boss. Uh, Siri, uh, what's the best way to tie a noose? Oh, um, roll the intro. Okay, and since we're recreating a dish from Wendy's, let's not get too artsy fartsy. Let's just stick with the classic russet potato. I have here about two pounds of russets. The first thing to do is to clean them, which I already did off camera. You don't need me to hold your hand. You should know how to wash a potato. Next thing to do, peel them. Or not. I like my french fries with the skin on. Okay, so let's grab a knife, cut a potato in half lengthwise. And you want them to be about a centimeter in th thickness. And cut them the same length widthwise. If your fries are coming across too th thick, you can just cut them in half lengthwise like this. Okay, once our fries are cut, put them in a bowl filled with cold water. This helps rinse off some of the starch. Also, it'll prevent our potatoes from turning brown. And let's add about a tablespoon or two of white vinegar. It helps retain the crispiness of the potato. Toss them around a bit to get rid of any starch and let them soak for half an hour. Once they're done soaking and you've come back from the infirmary, it's time to move on to our next step. So you can do this with paper towel, but I prefer actual towels because it's much more efficient at soaking up moisture. Okay, grab a second towel. Pat this nice and dry. Ah, and here we go, drier than my aunt's Thanksgiving turkey. Aunt Rita, I'm sorry, but somebody had to say it. Okay, the fry is done, and now we just need to innate the bacon. <laughs> but why does it mean fry? So let's fry up one pound of bacon in a medium sized saucepan over medium high heat. Oh, and uh, yeah, you might have noticed uh, my shirt looks different. I changed shirts off camera because, well, I had a little bit of uh, spillage when filming one of my YouTube shorts. And I cook until they're nice, crispy, and brown. Okay, our bacon is looking nice and crispy. So, let's kill the heat, because if you don't, this happens. And once you know the heat's off, grab a paper plate lined with paper towel. Oh, and uh, I'm gonna save that grease and use it to make refried beans. Trust me, refried beans made with bacon fat. Mexicans are gonna hit themselves in the cabeza for not thinking of that first. Okay, so now it's time to make the cheese sauce. Trust me, I made cheese sauces plenty of times before, which none of y'all bother to watch. So I know what I'm talking about. I have here a small pot. We'll put that over medium low heat and we'll melt down two tablespoons of butter. Okay, our butter's melted. Let's add two tablespoons of flour. And cause I can, we're gonna add a few spices. Half a teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, and one eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Okay, that might, okay, that was definitely more than an eighth of a teaspoon. And my sinuses are clogged anyway. All right, let's mix this together. And let's slowly add one cup of milk. We want to add the milk slowly because if we add it too quickly, the roux will clump up and we'll end up with a lumpy gravy. Aunt Rita. So let's bring this to a boil and thicken it. Okay, it's thickened up. Let's drop the heat back down to medium low. And while, yes, this does look a little bit on the thin side, don't worry about it because the cheese is gonna thicken everything up. Speaking of which, let's add eight ounces or one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Okay. 
Okay, let's set this aside. Okay, now it's time to fry the fries. I have here a straight sized top tape pan filled halfway up with oil and I warmed up to 350. Uh, no metric system joke this time. The rest of the world is kind of having a hard time right now. Anyway, the oil hit 350. Let's add in our fries. Ugh. Let's gently add in our fries. Cook until they're golden brown and delicious. Okay, once they're nice and golden brown, let's remove them from the oil. Place them onto a paper towel lined baking sheet, which I have off camera. I eh, forgot to get the wide angle lens. And hit them with a bit of salt while they're still hot. Uh, CRJ, you're supposed to twice fry them? Bullshit! Listen. Crispy skin, only once fried. All right, with our fries fried, we can finally, and I do mean finally, my feet are beginning to kill me, finally make the bacon eater fries. So grab some fries, put them on a plate, crumble on some bacon. Uh, don't worry, the dogs will get it. And finally, our cheese sauce. Here we go, folks. A nice, lovely plate of bacon eater fries. This is, wow, this is legit one of the best things I've made. One bite, and you're in heaven. Next bite, that's where you end up. This has been Chase Cut and Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and mean it at this time. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button. If you really like the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Thursday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and support me on Patreon. Uh, I'm sweating up a storm. I'm turning on the AC. High electric bill be damned.